Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Fronteras, a changing America. I'm Monica Ortiz Uribe. Pope Francis will make his first visit to the U.S. later this month. His trip does not include the southwest border, but locals here are already making an effort to put the Pope's message into action. Here to tell us more about that is Dylan Corbett. Did I say your name right? That's correct. Ah, with the Hope Border Institute. That's Welcome, right. Dylan. Thank you very much. So um, tell us uh, who you are, what you do, and uh, a bit about your organization. Sure. Thanks, Monica. Uh, my name is Dylan Corbett, as you said, and I'm the executive director of the Hope Border Institute. And the Hope Border Institute is a new initiative. We're brand new. We've only been around a couple months. And part of the inspiration actually behind HBI is Pope Francis. He really was one of the, one of the key sort of drivers of the work. We're Catholics in the region were really excited about him. And so what we do is we work with Catholics, the Catholic community in Las Cruces, the Catholic community in El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, and we try to bring them together, create solidarity between them um, so that we can put into action a lot of the teachings that Pope Francis has been calling on Catholics to do. So we work on issues of social justice, of justice, of peace, of poverty. And so all of our leaders from Hope Border Institute are incredibly excited about the visit of Pope Francis to the United States, and we're really looking forward to it. And so I understand um, part of the group's mission is to uh, unite uh, religious communities with also secular communities to work together. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Pope Francis, he's been calling for a church that's out in the streets. He's asked for the church that's bruised, that's out in the communities, that's working with people, that meets people where they're at. And that's really one of the main drivers between, behind our work. Part of our mission is to take the teachings of Pope Francis uh, around social justice, around peace, around poverty, um, and, and make, bring them into life, bring, make, them, make them real, make them concrete. And the way that we do that is by working with people in the communities uh, in our border area to look at the root causes of poverty and injustice and to say, what can we do about them? And do that not just as a Catholic community, but in cooperation with groups and folks and leaders who are already out there and active in the world of social justice. And the Pope's calling us to go out into the streets, to go out into the public square, and to go out and cooperate with others so that we can make a real difference on these issues. Now, um, Pope Francis, uh, some of the messages he's been sending out have, uh, have, been, uh, not, not, have been somewhat unexpected and mm -hmm. have gotten a lot of attention. Um, just uh, recently, he, uh, he discussed um, uh, making uh, annulling marriages uh, mm -hmm. easier. Um, he's had some uh, talks about women who have had abortions. Yeah. Um, so what is the religious community's uh, response to this particular pope? What are things that you're hearing in the community? And is there any kind of hesitation mm -hmm. um, uh, to sure. carry out? Sure. Some? Well, Monica, I, I think it's important to remember that Pope Francis is the per first pope, the first bishop of Rome who is from the Americas. And so he brings a completely different perspective to the papacy. He brings a completely different point of view to his job as pope. He's, bringing, he's coming to the papacy. He's coming to the office of pope with um, a view that perhaps his predecessors hadn't have. You know, his predecessor Benedict was fantastic in communicating the ideas of the Catholic Church, uh, in formulating them, in doing theology. He was a, he was a magnificent theologian. Um, and his predecessor, John Paul II, was a great champion of human rights on the world stage. Pope Francis is a bit different in that he's a pastor. You know, he worked directly with people in Buenos Aires, in a major metropolitan city for many years. Uh, and so he brings that perspective of coming from a community, a Latino community, an American community, to the world church. And that's completely different for a lot of Catholics. That perspective, that pastoral perspective, um, is completely different. You know, when he was elected, he made it a point to say on the balcony of St. Peter's, on, the, on the, the very evening on when he was elected, he said, you know, the Pope, the Cardinals have chosen me from almost the end of the world to come to do this job. And, and I think he was, what he was saying there is that he would bring that different, fresh perspective. And so people are reacting to it in, in perhaps different ways. 
Um, but certainly people are excited. He's brought that freshness. He's brought that novelty. He's brought that newness. And a lot of people who wouldn't consider the Catholic Church or consider some of the teachings of the Catholic Church are looking at it in a new way. And so I think that's great. I think folks are excited. So do you see, um, what, what do you see from some of the uh, uh, communities that you're working in, in Las Cruces, mm -hmm. uh, El Paso, and, and Juarez? Are people excited? Are people hesitant? Or are you seeing maybe a mix? I think they're excited. And, and I think it's for the same reasons, because this is a pope who really is from the other side of the world. And Pope Francis says time and time again, he said, we need to focus on people on the margins. He said that the church needs to go out to the periphery. He says that people who make policy, people in government, people in politics, they need to focus on people who are at the margins of existence, who are at the peripheries of existence, and he comes from there. And so that's really, that's really a, a, a special thing, I think, for people who live here on the border, because we live on the margins of two countries, Mexico and the United States. We live on the periphery. The periphery is where we live. That's where we live. And the Pope is saying that we need to focus on those areas because it's really when we consider the peripheries uh, that we can bring newness and freshness and imagination uh, into ways of doing things, whether it's in the church, um, looking at different ways of, of being church, looking at ways of, of being church in the public square, or whether it's in society, considering how do, we, how do we build society from the bottom up? How do we put the poor and vulnerable at the center of our discussions about what it means to be a community, what it means to structure our society, how we look at our laws, how we look at our public policy? He's calling on people inside the church and outside the church to focus on the peripheries, to focus on the margins, to focus on borders, and to rethink things. And so that's why I think people here in, in the communities of Las Cruces, El Paso, and Ciudad Juarez are really excited because we are a border community and the Pope's putting attention on us. Actually, I remember the Pope, uh, when he announced that he was coming to the United States, he said that he wanted to visit the border first. He said he wanted to enter the United States as a migrant from Mexico and coming over to the United States. He wanted to visit Ciudad Juarez, in fact, and cross the bridge as a migrant. Um, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, I think because of, of uh, you know, politics inside and outside of the church, it wasn't able to happen. But he promised he would do that at another time. But, but he wanted to do that, you know, in all of his trips, he's always gone to unexpected places. Yeah, I'm sure that would create some complexities for the border patrol. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> you know, one, of his, one of his first trips outside of the Vatican, it wasn't to, you know, some grand capital in Europe or some, uh, you know, important uh, place politically or, or, or even religiously. It was uh, to a small island off of Italy called Lampedusa. And it was one of the first times that the Pope had, as Pope steps out, stepped outside of the Vatican and gone somewhere. And, and it was this unknown place. E even today, I don't think most people know. If you say Lampedusa, I'm not sure they're familiar with it. But it's a little island uh, in the Mediterranean Sea off of Sicily, and it's where thousands and thousands of migrants from North Africa and other places continued to come to Europe. Uh, and, and unfortunately, many of them don't make the trip. Many of them die on the way. Many of them are di dying in the ocean. It's still happening today. But he wanted to go there first because for him, that was a border, that was a periphery, that w he was visiting people on the margins. These were people who were not Catholic, many of them not even Christian, coming from Africa, coming from other parts of, of the world, the Middle East, the war-torn Middle East, trying to make a better life for themselves. These were people who were living struggle. These were people who were experiencing poverty, real poverty, existential poverty, and he made it a point to go there. That was the first place he wanted to go, to visit these people who were struggling and experiencing the situation of migrants. So how do you take these big themes, social justice, poverty, immigration, and, um, and, and, and make them into individual actions on a local level? What are some of the things that uh, your group is planning on doing, some of the activities that you're planning on doing? Sure. Um, well, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has really been a model for us because, he, because he's calling us to focus on issues that maybe we wouldn't ordinarily want to focus on, like economic justice or like immigration, like the dignity of the migrant. Um, he's asking us to focus on these issues uh, in, in new ways, in creative ways, in innovative ways. And so what we want to do, our mission at Hope Border Institute, is to do precisely that. How do we look at these issues with fresh eyes? How do we look at these issues from the bottom up? And how do you put them into practice on the ground with real people who are struggling? Exactly. And so what we want to do, our, our objective is really to mobilize Catholics in the parishes, ordinary people that are in the pews and here in our communities, and, and educate them about what Pope Francis is saying. He's saying that you need to act. You know, the Pope Francis, he uses, uh, he uses the metaphor, an interesting image. He says you need to, act, you need to 
get involved with the heart, with the head, and with the hands. You know, you need to educate the head. You know, you need to learn about the facts. We need to learn about poverty, and poverty is a major problem here on the border. You know, the counties on the border are some of the poorest in the country. Uh, our border, if the border were a state, it would be the poorest in the country. So how are you educating uh, the, the religious communities uh, mm -hmm. in, in uh, El Paso, Juarez, and Las Cruces? Sure. Uh, so we're educating. We're going into the parishes. We're speaking to people. We're forming circles. We're forming leadership circles. We're identifying leaders in parishes that are interested in these issues. And then there are other people who are interested in, in working on them as well. We're also working with civil society organizations. So recently, to give you an example, we brought together 30 or 40 academics, people who are grassroots activists working in the field of justice, people who are Catholic, people who are priests, pastors, uh, ordinary folks like yourself and my, you, you and myself, uh, to get together and do a poverty tour. And we went over to Ciudad Juarez and we looked at some of the poverty and the injustice that exists in Ciudad Juarez, Juarez in real palpable concrete ways. You know, so we went over to Ri Riveros de Bravo, which um, is a place where there are thousands and thousands just on the other side of the border from El Paso. You could see it with your eyes if you stood up at the fence. Thousands and thousands of abandoned homes of people who fled because of the violence. And there's drug addiction there, there are abandoned homes there, there's graffiti, there's a polluted river that runs through the town. Even the cement of the houses is made from the very water from that polluted river that flows through the town. So injustice courses through the veins of that community in a real palpable way. You know, Paso, you wouldn't know was on the other side of the bridge. And, and so you we'll were bringing people from El Paso and El Las Paso Cruces. El Paso and Las Juarez. Cruces. And so we brought these people who ordinarily would have no reason to go into Ciudad Juarez to visit these places, to see them with their own eyes, to see the injustice and the poverty. What was the, what, 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 did you just drive by and look through the windows? Did you um, step out, out of the bus and have conversations? What went on during the We tour? did. You know, we made it a point to step out of the bus. We made it a point to have conversations with people because it's only when you meet people in poverty, only when you experience a relationship with those who are going through poverty, does something change in the head, does something change in the heart, and then are you able and willing to, to do something about it? Do you feel like, you know, I ought to get involved? And so that's what we're doing. The, the Poverty Tour, we're going to be replicating that experience for Catholics in, in Las Cruces, for Catholics in El Paso, bringing people from the different communities to other communities so they see what poverty is like. And then do you work with the, that neighborhood or that neighborhood or others in Juarez directly, or, or do you just show up uh, one, one day? No, we them? do. You know, we really believe um, that people need to be the protagonists of their own future. So HBI, we don't believe that we have the solution to problems of poverty and justice in this community. We believe that these people who are living in these communities, our communities, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters, they have the solution to their problems. And so it's important to be in conversation with them. You know, it's, it's, it's just as much an education uh, for us when we meet people who are experiencing poverty. They're the ones who teach us what it's like. They're the ones who teach us you know, the things that are holding them down, the pressures that are on their family, the injustices that they experience. Awesome. They're the ones who they teach share, us. They share some of the struggles that they live with uh, exactly. on a day-to-day, -day, the people who are living in the neighborhood. Exactly, and, and we, want to, we want to bring these people into our work. We want to share our mission with them, but we want them to be part of our work because the people who are experiencing it those are the people who are most suited to identify the solutions to their problems. So what do you do uh, from there? You, you've had the tour, you've uh, witnessed what the situation on the ground is in, in this particular neighborhood in Juarez. What, what next? You, you sure. touch the head and the heart. What mm -hmm. about the hands? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to do the social analysis, right? So a lot of the problems in our community on the border are related to structural problems, structural challenges, structural poverty, structural injustice. You know, so many of our community members, they're living in the shadows because they don't have, uh, they don't have the same rights that citizens do. You know, if you're undocumented or semi-documented, you may not have the same rights that other people do. What does that mean? That you can't travel to the same jobs that other people might be able to travel to? You might not have the same educational opportunities that other people might have to travel to? So the fact that we have a broken immigration reform system, that's one of those structural obstacles that keep people from realizing their full potential. And so it's on issues like that, once we identify and work with folks, to identify what are the structural challenges in our community that are keeping people down. Once we identify them, then we come up, we have to come up with a plan of action. So you're first, uh, you're, it seems like you're in the early stages of determining what are some of the issues uh, in this region that we can yeah. work on. 
and uh, and then and then the next step would be to develop a, a, a plan of action. What Absolutely. what do we what do we do? Uh, right. What do we do about things? That's right. Okay. So and a lot of our partners have already done a lot of this work. You know, we're talking about mobilizing Catholics, but the groups that we're working with, partnering with in civil society, they're already working on these issues of structural poverty, even here in Las Cruces. So tell me some of the partners that you sure. all are working with. So Cafe, for example, here in Las Cruces, mm -hmm. Comunidades in Acción, um, Comunidades de Fe in Acción. You know, they've worked, they did a really successful campaign on raising the minimum wage for folks for here in, in Las Cruces. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people can remember that. Uh -huh. Working for economic justice or in El Paso Border Network for Human Rights. You know, they're doing amazing work pushing back on some of the militarization and, and some of the, 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 the negative narrative that's coming out of Washington or Austin or, or the media or, or politicians even on the political stage right now that, that, are, that are, you know, projecting a really negative image of the border, a really negative narrative. And so they're pushing back. And, and so that's very important work. And we're getting Catholics involved in that work. We're even locally working on something in El Paso like municipal IDs. Communicating, communicating to Catholics the importance of municipal IDs uh, so that people can get out of the shadows in El Paso. And, and, and yeah, just to, for clarity, t tell us how municipal, what, what the purpose behind municipal sure, IDs Sure, you know, there's a great campaign uh, that we're involved in right now that's being spearheaded by Border Network for Human Rights. This is an organization in El Paso. In El Paso, one of these organizations that w that's already working, that's doing fantastic work around social justice in the area. And they're working on an issue uh, around uh, getting municipal IDs to people who are undocumented, who, uh, because of our broken immigration system, you know, don't have the ability to get papers, don't have ability, the and ability, and therefore don't have an ID. Exactly, to show don't have the other ability than maybe to get an ID from their country of origin. That's right. And so, what does that mean? Well, that that's a barrier for a lot of people. That's a barrier for a lot of our people who are our family members. You know, we have a El Paso has a has a, a, an amazing, vibrant immigrant community. Um, documented and undocumented. So a lot of our family members, a lot of our brothers and sisters, simply don't have the ability to do the same things that we can do, like get a loan. You need an ID to get a loan, uh, or other things. You know that. So the, the the fact that you don't have an ID, that you can't get, uh, you know, an ID that's recognized, it keeps you back. You can't participate in the economy. You can't uh, participate in public life. You can't participate in educational opportunities all in the same way. All because of that little piece of paper. So how can Catholics get involved in, in this initiative to, uh, to start a municipal ID program? Yeah. Well, you know, you can work together with Border Network for Human Rights. You can work with Hope Border Institute. It's one of the things that we're working on with, with, uh, with Border Network for Human Rights. And what would that involve? Like showing up at City Hall, calling up city representatives? What, what, what does it involve? Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So I think the municipal ID issue is a perfect example of one of those structural causes of poverty and how people have to get involved in the public square. And in that sense, it means letting your local leaders, local representatives know that this is an important issue for the community. Um, getting involved in the public square, getting involved politically, getting involved in public life. Um, and is that is that something that's um, a, a, a little un, un, unusual or unfamiliar to perhaps some some Catholics? And I think so. Yeah. And what what is some of the reaction that you've had uh, that your organization has had for encouraging this sort mm -hmm. of activity that maybe uh, some Catholics aren't aren't used to? Maybe? Sure. Yeah. Catholics. Uh, Catholic. Catholics may not be aware of of the great treasure that we have in something that's called Catholic social teaching which means that Catholics are called to get involved in social life. Catholics are meant to get involved in public life and that the church actually has a wealth of teaching on social matters, whether it's immigration or economic justice, the right to a just wage, the right to migrate, for example. Catholics simply aren't aware, a lot of Catholics in the parishes, that, that the church has this great treasury of teaching that calls them to get involved um, and that calls them to be active subjects of their community that calls them to be artisans of their communities. Catholics are meant to get involved. They're meant to cooperate with other people to create a better community, to put the common good at the center of our discussions about public life. And I wonder, you're reaching out to um, all these other uh, um, organizations uh, that, that, mm -hmm. aren't, that don't necessarily have a religious affiliation. Mm -hmm. I wonder if other religious dominations are um, are a part of your organization, or if you're reaching out, or, or is it exclusively or, or mainly a, mm -hmm. um, a, a Catholic uh, group? Mm -hmm. Well, like I said before, Pope Francis wants a church that's out in the streets. Mm -hmm. 
So we're willing to work with others. We're willing to cross frontiers, to cross you know, peripheries, to cross horizons, to work with others too. So anyone who wants to get involved in our work is welcome, whether it's another organization or another faith group. Uh, we work with a lot of different partners, uh, both religiously, ecumenically, and, and with folks who are in civil society, um, because that's what we're called to. It's not just about being Catholic. It's about working for, for the common good. It's about working for a better society. It's about working for, to, to better your neighborhood, your community, your nation, and your world. It's not just something that's limited to Catholics. Well, can you give me some other examples of, um, of some activities uh, that, that you all have, have done out uh, um, on the ground? Uh, you, you've talked about this, this municipal ID campaign, about the, uh, the bus tour uh, mm -hmm. across the border in Juarez. Mm -hmm. What other uh, kinds of activities are, are you doing? Maybe anything in southern New Mexico? Sure. Uh, well, you know, one of the things that we we want to do uh, that's really core to our mission is to generate, uh, and this is a Catholic word, solidarity. You know, Catholics talk a lot about solidarity. Um, and what does that mean? Solidarity means a sense of community, a sense of belongingness, a sense that we're mutually interdependent to build that solidarity. We, that's what we want to do. We want to build solidarity between the communities in El Paso, Las Cruces, and, and, and uh, Ciudad Juarez. And so we've been working really intentionally at that. Um, one of the things that we did, Pope Francis, uh, a couple months ago, released uh, his major teaching on the environment, an encyclical, it's called Laudato Si. And when he did that, we actually brought the communities together. Um, we brought the Bishop of, of, La, of Las Cruces, uh, Oscar Cantu, the Bishop of, of Ciudad Juarez, Tor Bishop Torres Campos, and, and Bishop Mark Seitz of El Paso together to sign a statement on behalf uh, together with leaders from the three communities to send a statement a letter of thanks to the holy father thanking him for this teaching on the uh, for this teaching on the environment and it was a concrete way of generating solidarity between the three communities because there are so many things that divide us right whether it's checkpoints or the wall uh, uh, there are so many things that unite us too our traditions our customs our languages but there are a lot of things that are pulling us apart uh, today and so that was an opportunity to come together and say thank you holy father and we're committed to looking at the questions of the environment, looking at questions of the economy uh, with new and fresh eyes. And, and we're going to do, do that together. And where do you start uh, when, when it comes to the environment? I know you, you mentioned the polluted river uh, mm -hmm. that you saw in this community in Juarez. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, I mean, did, was that the Rio Grande or was there some other river I'm not mm -hmm. thinking about? You know, it, it's, it was actually not a river that's going through the, the community of Riveres del Bravo in Ciudad Juarez. It's a little arroyo that contains a lot of runoff from the maquilas. Um, and so this is, this is polluted runoff that enters a little arroyo that travels the entire breadth of the community. And so these are chemicals, you know, this is runoff, this is waste that from, comes from the maquilas. Uh, and, so what, and can you, what, 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 are, what can you do about something like that? So well, you have to start at the grassroots, right? And that's, what we're, that's, what we, that's, that's our mission, to begin at the grassroots. As, as the Holy Father says, you know, build society from the bottom up. And so you consult with leaders uh, in the community and ask them, what is this community experiencing? What are the problems that you are experiencing? Not, don't consult necessarily just academics or policymakers or politicians, but what are the people at the bottom? What are the people at the grassroots? What are they experiencing? And so that's one of the issues, right? Runoff from Aquiles. Another issue that people are concerned about is water. You know, water is a big issue in our community. What are we looking at uh, in 10, 20, 30 years from now, you know, in terms of sustainability? Or the electric rate increases that we just saw in, in, in this community, in Las Cruces and in, in El Paso as well. How is that going to disproportionately affect people who are, who are low income? You know, they're going, to bear the, they're going to bear the burden of that in ways that folks who are more well off uh, and, and businesses simply aren't going to have to do. Um, so when you start to listen to people at the bottom of the economic scale, when you start to listen to the grassroots, you start to see things in a different way. And, and those, those issues, those problems, they surface up from the bottom. As I said, we don't come with an agenda. We don't know what, we don't know necessarily what the best solutions are for this community, but the people at the bottom do, and so they need to be part of the work. But once you start to consult, you begin to see, uh, you know, folks say, well, what are the environmental issues here? Well, they may not know about that polluted runoff arroyo. They may not know that folks are concerned because their electric rates are going up and they might have to get a payday loan just to cover, just to cover the increase. Uh, they may not know those questions. 
So tell us some of the churches uh, that are involved here locally in, in Las Cruces, and mm -hmm. if someone is interested in, in joining the organization, where do they go, what do they do, how do they contact you? Sure, well, here in Las Cruces, the Diocese of Las Cruces, Bishop Cantu, he's been a real leader for us. Uh, he's a leader in our organization. He's a leader on, on social justice nationally and internationally, actually. Um, and so he's been really involved. Catholic Charities of Southern New Mexico has been involved too. They're, they're a big partner of ours here in this community. Um, and so if folks want to get involved, they can connect with the diocese, they can connect with Catholic Charities of Southern New Mexico. Uh, they can get involved with us through our website, www.hopeborderinstitute.org. They can check us out on Facebook, they can check us out on Twitter. There are a lot of ways to get involved. Okay, okay, very good. And do you have any upcoming events that um, people can uh, look forward to at the end of September or early October? Sure, uh -huh. actually we're planning another poverty tour here in, uh, in the Las Cruces area where we're gonna bring together academics, we're gonna bring together priests, we're gonna bring together pastors, community leaders, grassroots activists, and we're gonna be looking at the colonias, you know, which are, which are you know, another example of poverty that a lot of people don't see but a lot of people here in this community do live in colonias. So you're going to do a tour of the colonia communities here in, in southern New Mexico. Mm -hmm, that's right. All right, and, and when is that? Uh, it's coming up uh, in just a couple months, actually. Okay, very yeah. good. Okay, so they can go to these, these uh, the, the website um, mm -hmm. and, and some of the local uh, spots you mentioned. That's uh, right. To get Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank you very much, Dylan, for coming on the show today. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been Fronteras, a Changing America. I'm Monica Ortiz Uribe. Thanks for watching.